Hi, this is Diane from Diane's Corner. And I just had it fail on me, so I'm gonna try again, but I'm on this uh, hill which I was on yesterday. And um, I was talking about the, uh, the different neighborhood uh, families and Joe Fritz family lived up here in this block and Connie kind of prompted my memory here. Now this is Rodney Limbo's house here. And um, so if I walk up here, we find the Joe Fritz family. And that, that's got, uh, I um, really want to kind of say a, a kind of a nice uh, way to look at this home from uh, Joe Fritz had, uh, I'm trying to think of how to say it. Well, for one thing, he was did a fine job policing the city of Belfield for 10 years. But um, I'm gonna just kind of work a little backwards on his family here. Um, they, uh, Joe and Lucy were uh, his parents and they came, Joe came from Germany and uh, and that's where they immigrated from. And then let's see, looking from the Billings County paper or here and also the Billings County Echoing Trails one. Uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, they um, went to Wisconsin. Uh, that would be the great grandfather or so. Well, the, the, the generation that came here anyway, that immigrated to Western North Dakota, Joel grew up in Wisconsin and worked for his dad. And um, he also um, learned how to operate a steam engine so he was uh, gifted that way. And then in 1907, Joe and his best friend Jack O'Brien struck off on their own and caught a train for Dickinson. So the railroad was very important in settling this area. Um, and after arriving in Dickinson, they caught a ride to Gorham, North Dakota with a wool wagon and drove um, north. And they of Joe officially filed on his homestead uh, 1907 and it was west of Fairfield and he started farming on his homestead in order to make money enough to stock his ranch he worked the steam engines and threshing rigs in the Gorham vicinity this is how the West was won and then 1910 Joe married Lucy O'Brien his buddy's sister Lucy was born at Bridgewater, South Dakota to Martin and Mary Donovan O'Brien on October 10th, 1885. Let's see, I'm trying to think how that worked here. Okay, well, anyway, Joe married Lucy O'Brien, his buddy sister. Okay, so Lucy was born in South Dakota, 1885, and they got married in 1910. And she became a teacher uh, she went to uh, the State Teachers College at Valley City and taught school in McHenry before coming to the Gorham area. So besides being a housewife and mother, Lucy was all, always willing to help any family who had an illness or needed a baby delivered. And she taught school, helped the county superintendent, Mrs. Brown, and cooked for any prisoners Joe had in the county jail. So this is um, kind of... Um, <laughs> that. Uh, Anyway, so the children born to Joe and Lucy are Margaret and Marge, Helen, who is Mrs. Jack Egley, and Lucy, Mrs. Clayton Hanson. Anyway, uh, and let's see, well, Les was born March 15, 1915, and he married Ollie Smedley. Les and Ollie had three children. Connie, Larry, and Rocky. And um, so anyway, that is uh, the Fritz family there. But I was going to also mention that Joe and uh, Lucy lived in the Gorham area until 1933 when Joe ran for Billings County Sheriff. He won the election and held the office for two terms, 1933 to 1937. And while serving as sheriff, 
three well-known people served at different times as his deputy. This is kind of where the stories around my house gathered because these guys were quite the uh, characters. They were characters. <laughs> so they were Ben Bird and Six Shooter Slim, Gunkel and Barney Connell. Got all those people on the, um, they got a cute little cat sitting on the porch there. So then coming up the hill here, I'm going up the hill this time, this is George and Evelyn Dietz's house. And so that's with Larry and Dennis and Cindy and that would be the sliding buddies there. And uh, this home, again, I said that was, I think it was Conklin's first, uh, I think it might have been Arthod's, but um, some of that, since I left quite a while back, I don't have all the um, new homes and new owners of the homes. But wow, is this ever a gorgeous day today. And now here is the uh, Morrison Ella Gerbig house. And they have, um, they had Gordon and Brian and Wayne and Kathy. And uh, so they built that home. I remember the kids were in first grade and my folks were good friends of theirs. At, at one time they had, well, my dad had uh, delivered gas at one time, got to know him that way out in the Badlands there, south of Belfield. And then this Castle family, I also remember this family because they came from Germany and built this home in the 50s, actually. And uh, Elizabeth came with them. And she was just starting school, and she did not know English. And she would come and, uh, over to our house, and we'd play all kinds of things and read the catalog. And she learned English while we were playing that, that way, too. So, and this is Mrs. Dorval's house here. Oh, we can get in on some Christmas music. How about that? I'll just head on right down the hill here. Noel, Noel. How sweet the music is. Isn't that peaceful, floating over the town of Belfield? Wow. I'm just gonna come right on down the hill here, show you where that music was coming from. It's coming from St. Bernard's Catholic Church and the bell tower up there. And this is Charlotte Halibachuk and Halibachuk Construction. Albert started Halibachuk Construction and Hugh Halibachuk has a construction company and and I've been here many, many years. And here's the, this was originally built as a convent. And then there's a parish house where the priest lives right next to it. And here's a beautiful church. Just take a scan of that. Now it's an apartment building. And they call it a, a rectory. That's what they call it. And here's the Catholic Church. And that's the bell tower. And we get those pleasant songs going over the town. I don't know, they, they, it seems like quite often, really. So here's this beautiful tree here. And actually, I'm right across the street from the school and I'm looking up the hill from where we came. Of course, the students are all at home for vacation, Christmas vacation. This is Richard Valesky's home right here. Richard has been editor of the Billings County Pioneer Golden Valley News for many, many years. Really appreciate all his 
work and keeping us informed about what's happening. And then, well, I'll just keep walking around the block. Here we go. Get a little closer to the church and they've got a beautiful nativity scene here. Here we go. And here they have the nice little monument. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. Jeremiah 1.5. Life, God's precious gift. Knights of Columbus Council, 6310. That's nice. And there is the nativity scene here. And actually here is uh, the school and offices that um, it's been here many years, I'm not sure when, but it's, uh, yeah, it's got the nice gym and we have meals there, different community um, activities <clears throat> when it's available. Right now, <laughs> We're not kind of, we're kind of locked down, so we're not really around it that much. And here we got the Ten Commandments. Uh-huh. And here's a little, little rock here. I haven't seen that before. I don't know, can you see that? Sitting area in memory of Tony and Maggie Krantz. Oh, that's nice. Across the street is Mrs. Oh, gee whiz. Uh, that house has gone through a lot of different hands, too. So I can't even think of her name, but <laughs> it went, it, it came and went as fast as it came. <laughs> I'll think of it later. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a nice hike, hike up the hill here and um, across there. Larson, there it is, came back, thank you, Lord. That's Mrs. Larson. I, uh, as a young girl, my, one of my first jobs was working in Medora, and she worked up there at the Chateau and would uh, pick me up and drive me to uh, the laundry where I worked in Medora. <laughs> oh, boy, that was fun. Okay, so now this is a home I'm very familiar with. This is Florence Obergay, which is home. It was for many years now. Um, it's a, another family here in town. So we have, in fact, used to um, have a garden here. And when I first came, <laughs> uh, we would get together and check out the garden that she had here. And uh, we also went up to coffee for, with Chopper's Kettle and Mom. And, Florence and I, well, look at those cute chickens, aren't they just cute? They're kind of cold this morning. <laughs> oh, they're kind of all huddled up there. So this is, there's a friendly chicken who might come and visit me. Yeah, well, look at that. They get entertained by that sweet music. I bet they have, oh, listen to that. She's going to speak a little bit, give us a message. There's the bird feeders. And so this is the alley going up toward my house, which is right there, 403, at the top of the alley. So, well, look at that cute little arrangement for the chickens. And so now we're walking up the alley, and thankfully I've I've kept the reception, and hopefully uh, you are enjoying the walk today and uh, remembering Les Joe and Lucy Fritz and uh, the policeman that he was for Belfield. And really appreciate everyone in Belfield for their wonderful contributions and participation and making it such a wonderful place to live. And last, Fritz, I just wanted to mention that um, we were good friends too. And his had the, lo had, had the gift of, of a long life, 105 years. I just uh, 
appreciate that family so much. So here I am at William and Sarah May Buckman's home. They built it in 1953, and uh, I've kind of come and went out of the picture over the years, but here I am now. Let me see if I can... T well, there we are. And thank you so much for joining me. Have a good day. Bye now.